Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, we're doing a video today on the E92 M3. I've got two bad wheel speed sensors, what I suspect to be two bad wheel speed sensors. It's been in my experience so far, at least on these E90s, that for whatever reason the wheel speed sensors are extremely sensitive. Um, in this case, um, it started off as a rear right wheel speed sensor. It showed speed but did not show direction of travel, which would throw a DSC fault. It was an intermittent fault, which then turned into a permanent fault. And then the front left wheel speed sensor kicked the bucket entirely which also caused a safety restraint system problem. So kind of goofy, but I'm gonna show you how to deal with that today. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the scanner, see what the codes are, just verify, and uh, we'll go from there. So we have three stored fault codes in the DSC system, a 5DC1, which is wheel speed sensor plausibility. Uh, essentially, it's not agreeing with the other wheel speed sensors or the data that's happening. Wheel speed sensor direction of rotation rear right. And then we have a wheel speed sensor direction of rotation front left. And that is all in the DSC system. Uh, I'm going to now go to safety restraint because I have a fault code for that. I'm going to read the stored information. No message from DSC road speed. So we have a 93FB fault code for that. And this, like I said, this is uh, two wheel speed sensors that are bad, the rear right and the front left. So I'm going to go focus on the front left first, since that one is not reporting any road speed or direction to travel first. Um, this also happens to be the easiest one to get to, uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are at the front left corner. Um, here is our ABS wheel speed sensor wire. Comes right into the back of the hub here. The Reluctor magnet is actually part of the wheel bearing on these cars, so sometimes a bad wheel bearing uh, can also cause an ABS fault. However, that's not the case here. There's no noise, there is no play, so the likelihood of that being an issue is very little. Uh, another thing to note as well on these is sometimes you can have debris that uh, sticks to the magnet on the wheel bearing. That can also cause this fault to occur as well. So, I'm just doing a visual here. I don't see any thing that would actually cause this fault code to occur. Um, like I said, I'm inclined to believe it's most likely the wheel speed sensor, so that's what we're going to be replacing. thing to note on that is, do not use aftermarket wheel speed sensors on these cars. They just don't work. Uh, so you want to stick with either a genuine or an OEATE if you can get it. I did a quick visual, uh, all the connectors are fine, I don't see any wiring problems, uh, nothing visually seems wrong with the original sensor, which is obviously this one right here. Now one thing I said earlier is you never want to install aftermarket sensors on these cars. And what I'm going to show you here is the new Ate package sensor uh, versus this original sensor installed in the car when, the, when it was built. So take a look here. You'll see that the sensor on the left, which is the Ate, has the BMW markings removed. And you'll see that the original sensor also says Ate, uh, but then some of the BMW specific information has been removed from the Ate sensor over here. As you can see, they are the same sensor. And if we come over here to the connector end, it's pretty much the same situation. So the original one says BMW, and the new one has had the BMW information drummed off of it. Uh, on the M3s and the 1Ms, um, the front sensors are specific to those cars. However, the rear wheel speed sensor is the same for all the 1 Series and uh, 3 Series cars from 06 to 2013, E90s, E82s, E91s, E92s, E93s. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in. Installation is super easy. Um, all this thing is held in with a 5mm Allen. And then you just have to route the wire. Um, Basically just plug this in to the individual locations. There's tabs uh, where they secure. You got one here, there's another one back there, and then you have your electrical box back there. It's pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. Now, one thing I wanna say is if you wanted to do the test, you could swap sensors between the left and the right side, since it is the same sensor per axle, all right? It's not uh, 
corner specific. So if you wanted to take the working sensor, let's say in this case the front right, swap it to the front left, that would give you an indicator that the ABS unit, the wiring to the sensor is good, and it is in fact a sensor that's bad. That's how you can isolate a bad sensor easily without special test equipment. And just so you can see, that's where the wheel speed sensor sits on the back of the knuckle. Uh, those four bolts right there uh, basically bolt on the wheel hub assembly to the knuckle. It's a bolt on assembly here. Um, but just got to line it up, kind of pushes into place. And then you have your five millimeter uh, little hex cap screw that sits there. And then it's just a matter of routing the wire back through its original locations and plugging it in. Once I have a plug in, I'm going to go back to the scan tool and look at the live data, make sure that uh, we have a uh, wheel speed again. So these wheel speed sensors have two data streams that they provide to the ABS unit. Um, the actual speed of that individual corner, which is obviously the wheel speed, and the direction of travel. Now I'm starting to spin it forward and as you can see, the wheel speed sensor changes direction of travel to forward and it changes the speed. Now it's not moving and if I spin it backwards, we get our speed in reverse and the sensor is picking up reverse. So that's a confirmed fix here on the front left corner. Perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, but like I said, this is a, a pretty simple thing. Now the amazing thing is these wheel speed sensors are just a two pin. You can kind of see that. Um, but these aren't like a, a basic on off switch. They're, they're pretty complicated uh, uh, sensor, and the only way that you'd actually be able to test these is if you had an oscilloscope and you can actually see the wavelengths. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have that kind of stuff here in my garage, but uh, as you can see, that is a fix here for the front left corner, so that solves part of our problem. So now we got the front left working again, which is causing the um, safety restraint system fault. I know it seems kind of strange, but basically because I had two bad wheel speed sensors, it was tripping the safety restraint system. Uh, essentially, it just wasn't on. Um, so the airbag wouldn't deploy, anything like that, which, not ideal. Um, but essentially, if you have two bad wheel speed sensors, the SRS system will not turn on because it needs to know if the car is moving. And I guess if there's uh, conflicting information from the other corners of the car where the sensors are working, uh, it just defaults to not knowing what the hell is going on. So it's one sensor swapped. Now go to the back right corner, swap that sensor out, and uh, hopefully that also fixes the problem too, but I'm pretty confident it will. Same situation as that front left corner using a uh, Ate OE wheel speed sensor. As you can see, the Ate, which I'm wiggling with my thumb there, uh, has all of that BMW information removed from it, like the part number. Uh, pretty much any BMW trademarking is removed from these sensors. You know, such as like, you know, the BMW right there being removed on the Ate version. So, exact same sensor, just a fraction of the price. Sitting in the car, uh, just start up the car after replacing those two bad wheel speed sensors. And immediately I start the car, all the lights on the instrument cluster turned off, so that's encouraging. But I'm going to take it for a test drive to make sure that uh, both the front left and rear right are reporting the values that they should be and they're not conflicting with any of the other uh, wheel speed information because that was causing the plausibility faults. And it was also causing the uh, SRS uh, fault as well. I'm going to pull up live data here on the scan tool. I'm going to go for a quick drive, and we're going to look at those values, but they should be fine. Based on the fact that the uh, lights turned off as soon as I started the car. So I thought I had to pull up the data. Uh, I do know that that bottom, uh, where it says rear left twice, uh, the absolute bottom one is rear right. Uh, this particular brand of scan tool uh, has, some, uh, has some spelling errors and things like that. But I have the front left and the rear right wheel speed sensor data stream pulled up gonna pull ahead forward here real quick should both be reporting forward and with a speed 
Fantastic. And throw it in reverse. Fantastic. They're both working. As I get a fake phone call, I love these. All right, so it looks like it is working. I'm gonna go take on an extended drive here, see what happens. Well, I got back from the test drive and everything turned out perfectly fine. Most of the codes actually just turned themselves off. Uh, but surprisingly, you know, a couple areas I didn't really check, and it's just a limitation of the scan tool that I was using is I had uh, some fault codes stored in the instrument cluster, uh, in the cast module, there were some codes, all related to the ABS. So I think total it turned out to be uh, 13 ABS fault codes across five control modules, which uh, it's kind of silly for uh, two wheel speed sensors, but uh, like I said, an easy fix on these cars, uh, it's just really the wheel speed sensor. Make sure you use an OE1, uh, like the ones I talked about, the Ate, which are the same thing that would be in genuine BMW, just a little bit less. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind too on these, uh, since it is the same sensor left and right on the same axle, you could always do a test by taking the sensor from the axle where it's working or from the corner that's working shifting it over and seeing if the problem follows the sensor it's usually the easiest way to, di to diagnose it unless you have a scope most people are not gonna have a scope so that doesn't really make sense to test it that way uh, you will need a scan tool to uh, read the uh, ABS faults and all those types of things or in, in live data to really be able to see what the hell's going on with it but you saw the live data you see what's going on it's pretty obvious it's two bad sensors fix was good a little bit of a different video but uh, that's another another car that's part of the stable, I guess. And uh, there's the E36 over there. Its first track day is actually coming up in a couple of weeks, so I got to uh, got a lot of stuff left to do, including some extra camber in the front, which I'm working on a little thing for that right now. But uh, those will be some videos coming up. But other than that, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Any questions, comments, leave in the comment box below. Also subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next one later.